What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and I uh, got a bit of a different Corsair keyboard for you guys. This is the Corsair K83, an entertainment keyboard. So for your home theater PC, your living room setup, your desk setup, an office space, anything like that. So I'm gonna go over it all for you guys today, talk about the pros and cons, my experience, all the good stuff, in case you wanna check out the K83. So the K83 is being marketed as an entertainment keyboard. So sure, use that your desktop, your workspace, but also connect it to your TV. Use it in the living room with your home theater PC, anything like that. So it's cool to see it's designed for multi-purposes here. And this is really Corsair's like first attempt to kind of get into anything in this category. They've had like the lap dog in the past and wireless keyboards for gaming in your living room. But I do think a more general entertainment keyboard like this is gonna be open to more consumers out there. So taking a look at it, it's pretty nice. It's thin and lightweight. It has that kind of like slate brushed aluminum finish that we've seen on their platinum keyboards, the K70s. You can definitely say it looks sleek. But right away, where this sort of differs from just a regular wireless keyboard is on the right side, you have a trackpad and a joystick, plus your left and right clicks, a volume knob, and then even on the back, there are two triggers, if you will, like a left and right trigger. They're also gonna be used for like a left and right click on your mouse. Note that both the triggers are just on the right side, not spread on the left and right. It is a compact 76 key layout with some white LEDs underneath the keys. This is so at nighttime, if you're using it in the dark or a dimly lit room, you can still see what you're pressing. They do use the pretty standard scissor kind of mechanism, chiclet keys that most wireless keyboards use, as well as, you know, a lot of uh, laptops and stuff like that. So the white LED is kind of embedded in there and it shines through. And yes, I'll do a sound test for you guys, just hold tight. Inside the box, it does come with a wireless dongle. So you can plug this into your PC, use it over the 2.4 gigahertz connection, plug it into your TV and take advantage now of the keyboard and the trackpad. So I just plugged it into my LG TV down in the studio and it worked right away. I can easily navigate through all the menus. This is great because it's really tedious to navigate controls and stuff like that with the remote that comes with the TV. So now you have the full keyboard plus a one-to-one -one control pretty much with the trackpad. And there is built-in Bluetooth. So you can use this with your phone or a tablet. Function F5, 6, and 7 is gonna give you that ability to change between uh, the three connectivity modes. So it's cool you can quickly just switch between them. So now let's talk about actually putting this to the test and using it for, you know, an entertainment setting. So I don't typically play too many games on a big TV. I do have a home theater PC, so I wanna play some casual games on that. You know, I can, but it's not typically my thing. But using this, it really wasn't an issue. I started playing some Planetary Annihilation Titans, and I think, you know, games like that, that's not gonna require, you know, really, really fast paced, quick precision, you're gonna be fine. If you're playing in Civ, maybe even something like Rocket League. My point is, with this keyboard, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be playing any kind of strike. Apex, PUBG, nothing like that. Nothing where in the quick millisecond you need to be quick and responsive. So when it comes down to it, just using a trackpad isn't gonna cut it. So again, casual gaming, you'll be just fine with this. I found for me, I had no issues just either, you know, placing it down on the coffee table versus, you know, just kicking back and having it in my lap. It really made no difference. I did find it was easier to use the actual trackpad as my mouse and my pointer and use the bottom left and right clicks because using that joystick up top and then the top trigger and the back trigger, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't as natural, I guess you could say. It is definitely harder to get used to a joystick like this. So again, for me, I just stuck to the trackpad and left and right clicks here. But depending on what you're using this for, you might be just fine with the joystick. I'm just telling you my preference. And with the integration of the volume knob, always a big fan. Uh, this one was pretty sensitive. I just found like the slightest little bit of adjusting it would kick my TV's volume either up or down by like 30%. So I have to go real slow and precise with this or else you're just gonna get, you know, blasted with volume. But in terms of just having this, you know, in the living room on the coffee table, it is a nice, thin, sleek piece. It's not gonna stick out. It's not gonna be an eyesore. So for living room settings, I think they nailed it here. And since on the bottom of the board, they have that right click, um, it's kind of in that divot there where it sinks in. So it's not gonna, you know, be accidentally pressed down when you have this just laying flat on your coffee table, unless there is something already there and it hits that. I didn't have any issues though. But now let's talk about it for your desk setup or for like use with a gaming PC. You can choose to use this wired or wireless. Um, I definitely would not use this over Bluetooth if you're gonna be gaming with it because like most Bluetooth devices there are gonna be some sort of latency. I know here it's 7.5 milliseconds for the responsiveness. So if you're gonna use it wireless, use it with that dongle because that's only gonna be the one millisecond response. This interestingly does not use Slipstream which they promoted at CES. So this was probably in development far before that. Now, if I wanted to use this in a more competitive game, like I said before, with something like Apex, 
I'm not gonna be using the touchpad here. I'm still gonna use the keyboard as a normal keyboard, but stick to my mouse. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, but in terms of, you know, just using it on my desktop, again, no issues at all. It worked just fine for me. But I mean, if you're buying this for your desk setup or an office where you wanna scrap the mouse and keyboard and just get an all-in-one like this, then yeah, that's what it's marketed for, really. It's not necessarily marketed as just a gaming keyboard, more so entertainment. So for that space, I think it would be also a pretty good option. Now we'll do a sound test. I know it's a little bit spread out from when I first talked about the, the, uh, the keys. We'll do a sound test now so you can hear how it sounds. Oh, wait a second. There we go. So a pretty standard sound from that wireless kind of scissor mechanism. I would have loved to have seen chalk switches in these, you know, the mechanical switches. Uh, these are from Kale. I know Corsair uses Cherry mostly in their keyboards. Would have been nice, but again, it's not a gaming keyboard, so we understand. Now we'll check out the software. So heading over into the IQ software, as I'm sure you're familiar with by now, this is where you're gonna create macros and remap all the keys on the keyboard. And this remapping doesn't really apply to the right side of the keyboard. So for example, you can't like change up the left and right click, for example, but all the keys are fair game. Gestures here by default will be controlled through your window settings, but in the actual IQ settings, you can go in and enable custom gestures. Then from here, change up what all the 18 gestures can do and what action they perform. So for example, if you're an Apple user and you wanna keep those, you know, the trackpad gestures that you're used to consistent with the K68, like what you've been using on your MacBook Pro, here's we can change up and customize all that. Down to the lighting tab, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty much just deciding the brightness level if you, or if you wanna pulse the LEDs or not. Uh, my advice is just keep it at like a medium brightness so you can still see that night, but still save some battery. Calibration for centering your joystick so there's no possible drifting when using this. And the navigation control is probably the most important tab. Uh, here's where you can set your trackpad speed, the responsiveness with the touchpad tapping. You can invert it if you're into that kind of stuff. And also here you can adjust the joystick speeds and sensitivity. Then lastly is performance with locking your function row. And here's where you can go in and manually toggle some of those functions. Now with those custom gestures that are controlled through IQ, those are saved through the actual software and stuff. So you can't actually use those custom IQ gestures that you enable if you plug this into your TV. You could still use the touchpad to you know, scroll and stuff like that, but you can't use those custom ones that are controlled through the software. Just figured I'd point that out. Now next up before we kind of wrap this up is gonna be the battery life. And for a wireless keyboard like this, it is pretty good. It's rated at, I wanna say 40 hours of continuous use with no LED lights on. Obviously, if you have the lights on, it's gonna drain the battery. I believe if you have it up to like 100% brightness, it's only lasting for eight hours, it says. I've been using it for around, I haven't charged it since, what's today? So five days ago is when I first charged it. I keep my battery or the LED brightness at 33%. And when I check in the IQ settings, it shows that I'm at medium battery, which would give us a percentage, but it just says medium. Uh, so pretty damn good, around five days so far, you know, maybe two or three hours a day I've been using this and testing it and getting shots and stuff. So I've been turning it on and off, switching it, which would presumably drain more power, but a lot of times these low, these uh, low powered wireless keyboards are pretty good. Uh, and they even have like, you know, auto shutdown and auto shutdown for the lights if you don't use it for, you know, 60 seconds or, you know, a few minutes, the keyboard will get into low power mode. So that's pretty good. Now, all in all, to kind of wrap this up, for me, it's been very positive. For an entertainment keyboard, as this is marketed for, it's going to be great. The wireless keyboard, plug it into your Mac, your PC, your TV, your HTPC, it's all gonna work just fine. And having the kind of, you know, the hybrid here with the, the triggers, the joystick, the touchpad, and the keyboard is really cool. As for cons, I can't really think of anything too damning. Uh, like I said, the volume knob is kind of, uh, kind of responsive, maybe a little bit too responsive, but that was just on my TV when I was using it. Like it would just like shoot up and down really quickly. On my, t on my actual PC when I was using it to control the volume, I was definitely more, you know, like you'd expect from a, a volume knob. And I don't necessarily hate that bottom trigger on the right side. It just feels awkward when you're in kind of that, you know, kicking back mode. You're lounging back on the couch and you have the trigger up top and the trigger on the back. Ergonomically, it works out, but it's just like, I feel like your brain tells you there should be either one, like the paddles on both the back sides or up top. 
I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not really too much of a, you know, an entertainment PC gamer. So if we're just casually watching TV, using it to navigate menus and stuff, pulling up, you know, searching stuff on YouTube, or like I said, just like hanging back and playing a casual game, all work just fine. And this retails for $99, which is a really, really good price. There are cheaper alternatives out there, but they are cheaper keyboards in general, much cheaper quality, and they don't have a lot of the customization and the extra, you know, the triggers, like I said, the, the touchpad, the volume knob, not a lot of keyboards actually have that. So I think for $100, the K68 hits a pretty good spot that otherwise Corsair wasn't really, you know, marketing and appealing towards. So now a whole new area of consumers out there could see this, pick it up for their entertainment center, pick it up for their minimal desktop, and now they have a great option for just $100. Pretty good stuff from Corsair, definitely recommend the K68. And guys, I'll wrap it up for my review. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp, and last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed, have a good day.